Principal Secretary for Collection Services, members of Parliament present here from both the National Assembly and the Senate, Your Excellencies, Governors of uh, Elegeo, Malakot, and Lekipia, and if you would allow me to light on all other protocols that have been established, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, I'm here to convey on behalf of the Ministry of Public Service, uh, Performance and Delivery Management in particular, and the Executive in general, uh, our warmest congratulations to the judiciary and uh, uh, the leadership of uh, the Honorable uh, Chief Justice and the President of the Supreme Court for this really uh, historic milestone that you have achieved. I am particularly excited that I, the wider context with which I view this in the context of democratization of access to justice for me something that is extremely important. So using this uh, online filing, now everybody, senior, junior, poor, urban, rural, can have exactly the same rights and privileges to uh, access to justice in any part of this country. And for me, this is a very, very major development in our nation development process. This today is not about the judiciary, it's about how we are going to develop as a society, a very critical milestone which is indeed celebrated by all of us. Um, Honorable Chief Justice, I dare say that uh, for the last 60 or so years, uh, two things. One, access to justice has been a premium product. The preserve of very few people, extremely few people within our society. Even uh, more striking, and I've seen uh, President uh, of LSK, the URI is here, legal representation is not just a luxury, uh, I mean a, a, a premium product. It is actually a luxury product. Yeah? Very few of our citizens have got access to lawyers who can be able to represent them. Even less have got access to you know, uh, the infrastructure that is required to access justice, but the equalizer the one that makes all of us equal, none can do it better than technology. And that is why I want to thank you for this uh, milestone. I have to admit that uh, from the executive, I have seen several things where the judiciary is far much ahead of us. And I have to, uh, to, uh, to admit on that. Probably because, probably because um, maybe you have got some advantage. Uh, a wonderful system like this, you can launch it without somebody filing an injunction. So, <laughs> which privilege is, is not, uh, you know, is not equally enjoyed by some of us. You know, we have tried to do something, uh, similar things, you know. Um, um, for the last three months, up to the 19th of, uh, I think 19th of, uh, of February, uh, we couldn't, uh, to be precise, up to 23rd of February, we couldn't uh, issue national IDs to our young people for three months because of an injunction. And so do not take this for granted that nobody went to court to stop you from, from implementing this system. So because we could not issue the Maisha number, we were stuck with things that we couldn't do. Even now we are stuck on so many things. So when I grow up, I want to be in the judiciary where I can do everything without somebody having to, you know, to, to, to stop me. But indeed, um, there must be things, and that, that's where I'm driving to, that we must agree on. You know, things like automation, things like digitalization, things like, you know, because the only way to fix society is to fix society through processes. The sure bet of how we can fix our processes is through automating. Because human beings are born different. We are not like zebras. If you go to the Masai Mara, you cannot differentiate between a male zebra or a female zebra, a young zebra or an old zebra. They all look the same. But human beings, unfortunately, or fortunately, we are all different. So only by following a single common code, which is the digital uh, processes, that you can be able to ensure that we can have compliance and enforcement across the board. As I wind up, let me just uh, finish by asking that uh, where one arm of government, 
And I'm really liking the new environment. I know we have had our, our, our push and pull in the past, but now I'm finding a fresh uh, air of cooperation across you know, uh, many areas of uh, the three arms of government. Uh, as you are aware, we, we launched our collaboration between the judiciary and uh, Huduma Kenya, where uh, now we are rolling out a Huduma desk, I mean a judiciary desk in all our 52 Huduma centers. So that those of our citizens who do not have access to broadband, do not have access to uh, smartphones, do not have access to gadgets that can be able to do the e-filing, they can walk to the nearest uh, Huduma center and somebody can, using this system, be able to uh, do the fighting for them. And uh, we are uh, working with our members of parliament through uh, NGCDF uh, to roll out a uh, um, Huduma Center in every uh, constituency in this country. And as I promised you, uh, Honorable Chief Justice, each of those Huduma Centers going forward will have an enclosed room for judiciary. I know uh, uh, our friends, the lawyers, were expressing uh, concerns, but there is nothing to fear because in every Huduma Center we are going to have an enclosed room for judiciary so that somebody can feel free to file uh, their, their cases in complete privacy. The um, uh, case management system, as we discussed before with the, with the Honorable Attorney General, is another area where I see no need for duplication where judiciary has done its right, because at the end of the day, I do not believe that this is a system for the judiciary. This is a system for administration of justice. So it is really not a, a judiciary issue. So where it makes sense for us to use what is there, because at the end of the day, even those people who sat and uh, to program uh, this, this system, they were paid by taxpayers' money. There's no taxpayer for the executive, for the legislature, for the judiciary. At the end of the day, the pass, uh, pass string is one. The one who pays is the taxpayer. So why can't we now, uh, as, as, as we um, challenge the, chief, the, the attorney general, to use uh, the case management system as is established by the judiciary, to be, um, uh, there cannot be judiciary for everyone. We only have one judiciary. So we can use that case management system across government. And uh, during the road shows that we completed the other day, we were able to share with all our accounting officers to come to the judiciary and ensure that they code their cases so that they can be able to identify it from your system as belonging to the Minister of Lands, Minister of uh, Environment, ETC, ETC. I also do not see uh, why we should not uh, now take this system and extend it back to all other players in the value chain of justice, from the police to the uh, OB system there, to a decision to charge or not to charge, to the bail, especially the cash bail issue, things which are existing out there in manual processes when everybody has moved. And of course, um, uh, when you hear us trying to automate those things, and then people say, oh, you know, we don't have budget. It's the same situation you handled. But you are able to provide justice and say, budget or no budget, we are going to implement this. How I would wish uh, for us in the executive, also especially in the police, things like instant fines. And now maybe Honorable Chief Justice, you know this issue of instant fines came to before, the judiciary before. Somebody got injunction. I'm sure now you can feel our pain. Uh, trying to you know implement this because if the years that instant fine system uh, um, uh, we were trying to maneuver it if it had been implemented even today we would be very much uh, better off we will not will stop collecting cash cash fines cash bills totally unaccounted for and which is not very good for for integrity and for transparency and for prudent uh, management of financial resources so i really wish that uh, within the ncaj you all see together uh, with all other uh, players in that sector to be able to see how we can be able to stop duplication and if someone yeah, has pioneered something let everybody else instead of um, wasting taxpayer resources to actually ride on uh, the foundation that has been set as i complete um, also the um, issue of alternative just uh, dispute resolution i think this is very important uh, um, one of the ways that we are working uh, as a ministry is to ensure that even before these cases come to you the, the biggest denial of justice is denial of service 
and especially from the public sector. And what my ministry is doing, uh, using uh, a collaboration with the, uh, the office of the Ombudsman, which is an independent office, but that does not stop us from working together. Where we are working on a system uh, to be known as PASHA, which is a digital ombudsman. And even in all our Huduma centers, we'll have an office for Pasha. What that means is that even before we come to you, administratively, we'll have been able to do a name and shame of anybody who is denying service to Kenyans and taking administrative action so that we are able to minimize uh, the number of cases that are filtering through to, 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 to the judiciary and managing it from that perspective. Let me say that I am a firm believer that you know, in this country, everybody who is in this room is in this room because you are above average. It is so difficult to make it in this country if you are average. And we look forward, I look forward to when my children, whether they are average, below average, or above average, everybody has an equal chance. We cannot achieve a country where the average people has, can do well if we don't fix our law and order. And that is why I believe what we are doing today is very important. People who survive, who make it in this country is because, can you imagine the pipeline of someone coming from Samburu to be a judge of the, court, of the Supreme Court? It is one in a zillion. Yeah, because it takes an above average Isaac Renaola to make it through the pipe. But how can we create a society? That even those people, uh, Justice Renaola left in the Manyatas in Samburu, have got an equal chance. Like, like, like us. Let me say, our generation, we can, we can survive. We can bulldoze our way. We can fight our way. We can try to beat the corner because we are above average. The children, our children cannot survive that. The only way, if you care for our children, is to create a system of law and order, systems that work, processes that are determinable, that are predictable, and that can only come with a heavy investment in law and order. That is why I want to ask uh, the Honorable Jerry Miner, uh, uh, from the uh, parliamentary uh, point of view, I really support that we need to invest more in the judiciary and I'll keep on you know, uh, championing for more allocation of resources to the judiciary so that as we try to look at all these sources, some will come through digitalization, like what we are doing today, others will come through brick and mortar. And, and, and uh, I'm reminded by uh, DCJ Mwilu that the only time we remember these Supreme Courts is, is during the petitions. But since they come only once in five years, I also want to put a case, and I think I've shared this with the successions of the President, that we really invest in a new, in a new Supreme Court building so that we can be able to you know, have even it's also a, you know, a mark of our respectability as a nation because uh, I think the judiciary also reflects uh, who we are. So uh, I want to thank you. Thank you for the collaboration that uh, now is gaining momentum. We are solving so many things, things that would have been to and fro, the engagement that we're having right now, the tripartite collaboration between the judiciary, the, the legislature, and the executive that you spearheaded with the President is really a step in the right direction. I thank you all and I congratulate you.